Hi guys, you're watching a screencast from AsianEfficiency.com. My name is Aaron and today I'm going to show you how to use the new Mac operating system, Lion, more effectively and how to use it productively. So as you can see, this is indeed 10.7 Mac OS X Lion. And the first thing you need to know about Lion is that if you haven't upgraded to Lion yet, I would actually suggest holding off one or two uh, updates, that is 10.7.1 or 0.2 until Apple works out all the bugs and issues that will undoubtedly arise with your operating system. If however you feel like rushing ahead and installing it, by all means go ahead, but I would actually recommend doing a clean install, which is to say back up all your data, go to system restore, and then install a new operating system and then manually load on all your programs and documents and everything again, because you may run into some problems with speed, with performance, with kernel crashes, which is typically common when you migrate from one operating system to another without doing a clean install. If you have decided to take the plunge and install Lion, I'm going to show you some pretty cool stuff today about how I've started to use it and how I think that it can actually increase your productivity quite a bit if you decide to embrace a lot of Apple's new features. Okay, so the first thing you'll probably notice about Lion is the inverted scrolling function, and I will show you what I mean by this. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Asian Efficiency. Okay, so here we are on the blog. As you can see, all the traditional scroll bars have been replaced by this funky new sort of fade in, fade out scroll bar. Now, you can actually see my hand, of course, but one thing everyone's going to notice immediately is that before, on your trackpad, when you flick down with two fingers, you used to scroll down. However, that now results in scrolling up and then up re results in scrolling down, left and right, right and left. Basically what Apple's tried to do is mimic the interface on an iPad or an iPhone where you actually use your fingers to move the content, so to speak, rather than navigate down a page. Now it takes a couple of days to get used to, but once you're actually used to it, it's actually better, at least more intuitive than the old method of you know, scrolling down to go down also show you guys some of my setups for the trackpad that I think work really well. Uh, this is pretty standard. Here's the option to invert or to stick with quote unquote natural scrolling as Apple calls it. I want you to pay attention to this page which is the more gestures page. Now I set up swipe between pages for three fingers. The reason for this is setting it to two fingers it actually interferes with scrolling left and right in some applications, like when you're reading PDFs or such. Uh, swiping up between full screen apps, which is left or right, which I'll get to in a sec because you're going to be doing that a lot. I would actually suggest four fingers for that rather than three, so that you can free up three for use to swiping between pages. And that also doubles as navigation for your browsers. For example, if I go to Asian Efficiency and I swipe left with three fingers, it will go back to my main page. By default, I don't think App Expose is actually activated, so you can just activate it there. And I assigned Mission Control and App Expose to three fingers up and three fingers down. Now, I actually wish that you could configure these options a little bit more, so that you could put them more towards your own liking and what what is comfortable for you. But you know, it is what it is. Okay, some other things to note about Lion: Power PC apps no longer run which was very disappointing to me, as I did have a couple that I still used on a regular basis. Expose, the interface where you can see all your windows, has been replaced by Mission Control. Uh, you should probably also note that some programs have, don't actually work underlined properly. Their toolbars are messed up, they crash, they <laughs> remove data. Basically, if you find a program that doesn't work, I wouldn't suggest using it for the time being until a fix has been released. And as I mentioned before, you may get some kernel panics if you did a straight upgrade as some of your drivers will be incompatible. Okay, so onto the interesting stuff, which is how do you actually use Lion to increase your productivity? So with all these changes, especially the swiping left and right for full screen applications, with the new mission control, with the launch pad, you know, a lot of people have been complaining about them, they call them gimmicky, they're annoyed that Apple made all these changes, that Mac is becoming too much like an iPad. Well, you know, I tried something different. I actually tried to use them and see what they, what would happen if I used them the way they were supposed to be used, and if it would actually increase my productivity. And it turns out that it kind of did. So the first thing I actually did was I set up Launchpad. 
So Launchpad is where all your applications go. If you have an iPhone or an iPad, you'll notice that this is almost identical, that you can you know, create folders exactly the same way, um, that you have different pages, almost like a iPad. So the first thing I did was I put all the applications that I use pretty much on a daily basis on the first page. I put all my secondary applications, stuff that I use every now and then on the second page, you know, third page, stuff that I use even less, and the last page, of course, all the stuff that I use maybe once a month, once every couple of months. So the first key to this using of Lime productively is that you'll notice I've hidden my doc and my doc has almost nothing in it. My doc has the finder, the main reason being that you can't actually access a finder icon on Launchpad. It has the link to Launchpad, stickies, which I use all the time, uh, Launchbar, which is another way, a third-party application, and another way to launch applications, and of course, ScreenFlow, because I'm recording this right now. So the first thing to do is to arrange your Launchpad so that all your applications are easily accessible. Now what this means is that every time you're going to open something, you're going to be going straight to Launchpad and opening it from there, rather than clicking on your dock or opening a finder window and going to applications. The second thing is that Apple has introduced this new feature called full screen applications. And what they are, are they, well, they are applications that take up your whole screen. For example, if I launch Safari and I hit this button here, it goes into full screen mode where my menu bar is gone, where my dock is gone, and where everything else is gone, and only Safari exists. Now, the problem is that not all applications are yet full screen. As you can see, full screen applications appear up here at the top, but if I launch, say, a normal application, let's say Google Chrome, it still appears as a normal screen. Now, Chrome actually does have a full screen mode, but it's what I call a fake full screen mode, which is it doesn't act, if you go to full screen in Chrome and you look in Mission Control, it actually sits within a desktop rather than being its own full screen application up here. Now I'm going to show you a way that you can actually make non-full screen applications into full screen applications. So what you want to do is you want to maximize the window. Uh, I use a little free program called Shift It. Go to maximize. You want to swipe up to go to mission control and you want to drag the window to the top right corner over here where there's a plus icon. And you put it there and it, and it sits within its own desktop. Now what this means is that if you swipe left and right, you can actually swipe between different desktops. So effectively, even though Chrome isn't a full screen application, if I keep it to one desktop, I can effectively make it a full screen application that I can use. And of course, you can do this for other applications like the Finder as well. Now you guys have probably noticed that I've hidden my dock and the main screen for this is basically to use full screen mode. So say I'm in Safari, I go to Google. And then I want to launch another application. So let's say I want to launch, you know, I want to play some music, so I want to launch Spotify. What I do is I go to Launchpad, I hit Spotify, it opens. Okay, so by default it opens in the first window. However, if I want to turn it into its own desktop, I simply drag, drop into a new screen, and now I've got Spotify in its own quote-unquote full screen desktop. Now something else that I noticed is that if you actually right click on applications, you can use this function called assign to to lock them to particular desktops. Now I don't think this actually survives through a restart, but if you don't reboot your computer often, it's actually pretty useful because this way you can actually order applications to open in specific desktops every single time. The other thing you guys want to note is that you can actually close open desktops by clicking on X and this will move your existing applications from that desktop uh, back into the default desktop. One little minor annoyance with this new system in Mission Control is that you can actually rearrange the order of your desktops and full screen applications. If you could do that, this system would pretty much be perfect for working. Okay, so by now you probably realize that under Lion you're going to use Launchpad and Mission Control and rearranging desktops quite a bit. Now, 
question that some of my friends has was, well, what about a mouse? You know, it's nice to have a trackpad, but if you have an iMac or if you have a big setup at home, how do you use the system with a mouse and keyboard? Well, there is a way. I actually do indeed own a regular mouse and I'll show you how I've set it up. Okay, so I have plugged in my Logitech mouse and I'll show you here how I've set it up. So the first thing I did was obviously update the drivers so that they support Lion. And these buttons here, these tiny ones here, are the back and forward. And they double as back and forward in Chrome and Safari and browsers and Finder windows. The middle button, which is this one here, I set to mission control, but I set it to launch pad. So if I press the middle button on my mouse, it brings up launch pad. Now, the thumb wheel button, which is this special button here, I actually assign to mission control. So if I press it, it opens up mission control. Now, these two here, thumb wheel forward and thumb wheel back. Now, I wanted these to replicate the swiping between full screens on a trackpad. So I assigned it a keystroke which I believe is control plus right to go forward, which does this, and control plus left, which does this. So that's how you use a mouse on line. Okay, so the last thing I wanna show you guys is an example of workflow on line. And I'm gonna do it by showing you how I write a Asian efficiency article while using OSX Lion and while switching between different applications and different sources and how this can actually increase your productivity. Okay, so here I am at a blank desktop again, and I'm gonna show you how to use the workflow to say, write an article. So the first thing I'm gonna do is load up mind mapping software because that's how we write agent efficiency articles. So let's say agent efficiency article on uh, essential productivity applications for the Mac. Okay, and that is actually one of our upcoming articles. So I have my note open. What else do I need open to write an AE article? Well, I probably need to log into the AE backend. And I usually use Google Chrome as my browser of choice. I stick that to a new desktop, maximize it, and navigate to the Asian efficiency backend. Okay, so I am logged in, and this is obviously the Asian efficiency backend. So I've got my mind map, the backend. You know, I'm going to open a Google window so I can do research. There you go, Mac applications. So basically, what I used to do was have multiple windows and click through on the dock and go through different applications to get my work done. Or to use something like Witch, which lets you go between different applications, or you know, use Alt, uh, use Command Tab, sorry, to switch between different applications. Now I just swipe left and right between Chrome, between my node, and between any other applications that I need. Opening a new application, of course, is just as simple as setting up Launchpad, picking the application, letting it load, and if necessary, assigning it to a new desktop to have it in a place that's out of the way. So this was an agentefficiency.com screencast on how to use Mac OS X Lion's new features, Launchpad and Mission Control to increase your productivity and efficiency and to give you a better workflow. If you want more great articles about productivity efficiency and of course Mac software, visit agentefficiency.com.